Joshua chapter 23. And it came to pass a long time after that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about, that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. And Joshua called for all Israel, and for their elders, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and said unto them, I am old and stricken in age, and ye have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain, to be an inheritance for your tribes from Jordan, with all the nations that I have cut off, even unto the great sea westward. And the Lord your God, he shall expel them from before you, and drive them out of your sight, and ye shall possess their land, as the Lord your God hath promised unto you. Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left, that ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them, but cleave unto the Lord your God, as ye have done unto this day. For the Lord hath driven out from before you great nations and strong, but as for you, no man hath been able to stand before you unto this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand, for the Lord your God, he it is that fighteth for you, as he hath promised you. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves, that ye love the Lord your God. Else, if you do in any wise go back, and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you, and shall make marriages with them, and go in unto them, and they to you, know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you. But they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until ye perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. And behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth. And ye know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All are come to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed thereof. Therefore it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you, which the Lord your God promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things until he have destroyed you from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. When ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and have gone and served other gods, and bowed yourselves to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and ye shall perish quickly from off the good land, which he hath given unto you. Here we see Joshua, who is aware that he is dying, old and stricken with age, and he's giving some counsel to all of Israel. He has these people gathered together, and he's telling them what the situation is, and he's giving them warnings. And there are four or five that really he wants these people to understand. And he said, come not among these nations. In other words, don't associate with these people. You tend to adopt the habits and attitudes and behavior of people you associate with. These people are heathens or idol worshipers. Some of your people are so stupid they will adopt it and other people will do it for social reasons and all kinds of other things. Don't do that. Second thing he says, don't even mention the names of the gods. That's basically, don't discuss what they're doing. You know, Israel, was, uh, uh, I had one fellow one time explain that Israel had a desert god, and now that they weren't in a desert, there were people who thought they needed a different kind of god. God of settled land, and god of fertility, and all the rest of it, which was what the people had there. Don't discuss other gods, period. Don't serve those other gods. Now, if they did, these people would be snares and traps to them. The Lord would no more drive these people out from before them. They would have to do it themselves. And if they went to worshiping other gods, they would perish off the good land. Now, all of this was the covenant that the people had made before they entered the promised land with Moses. And so there was nothing new, 
Nothing strange, nothing they didn't know. This was just another repetition of the exact facts of what was coming down the road if they didn't live righteously. These people have absolutely no reason to say, what was that? We didn't understand what you said. Because time after time after time after time, they were counseled and they agreed, and then they showed half-hearted obedience to it. One of the things that we need to understand is if we're not more obedient, if we don't show a greater love for the Lord, if we are not more valiant than we might sometimes be, that the Lord can't do wonders for us because we aren't going to deserve it. He can't do stuff for us uh, that's going to be a benefit to us unless we deserve it.